Hi, my name's Phil. I like talking about politics and in this video I like to discuss an article in the Sunday Times that claims we just need to eat less to save British farming and what British farming thought of the concept. Quick hint, uh, British farming is not convinced that a random journalist really understands what farming needs. But first, if you'd like to be notified of daily news and politics, please subscribe to the channel and click the bell notification icon. So, the Sunday Times, being clear, we always have to explain these things at the start, one of the newspapers backing Brexit, back in 2016. Maybe not as deranged as The Express or The Sun, but a Brexit-supporting publication. Well, now, Brexit means a critical shortage of food, in part fuelled by a much-reduced farming capacity. I talked yesterday, I think, possibly, it depends how the schedule goes, about how British farmers are just not planting as much for next year because they cannot cope with the same levels of harvesting as before Brexit. So they're just going to plant less and leave the shortfall to a greater reliance on imports, mostly, of course, from the EU. So what does the Brexit-supporting Sunday Times think the solution is? Because they can no longer bang on about how we should just grow more food ourselves, because we're producing less. Not just crops either. Meat production is being scaled back, actually scaled back quite alarmingly at the moment. But surely those who argued for Brexit have a plan for this. After all, they must have put some thought into this. Plenty of other people were warning about problems to our food supplies years ago. Surely they thought about it. Well, the headline, why Britain needs to go on a crash diet to save farmers and supermarkets, did not exactly inspire confidence. You know, it's the classic line that has been used by other Brexiteers and will continue to be so. Oh, we eat too much anyway. As if Brexit was just a secret path to a healthier lifestyle. Not that it will be healthier, because you think this through. You know, we've got problems producing and distributing food. So what's hit by that? Fresh food. You know, we're not just going to become more reliant on foreign food, but processed food as well. Processed food keeps for longer. So if shops have to wait longer for deliveries, if they can't get their regular deliveries, it's like, sorry, we'll get them to you when you can. Well, that's the food most likely to be left on the shelves at a reasonable price, isn't it? Because it lasts longer. I mean, when I go to the supermarket, the shortages I see are fresh food mostly. Don't see gaps on the biscuit aisle. Now, don't get me wrong. Some of us definitely need to diet. I bloody do. I shouldn't even know what the biscuit aisle looks like. Should be steering well clear of it. I was bad enough before the pandemic. Shocking now. And I'd lost a load of weight before COVID came along. My partner was telling me that at her work, people are just going in casual clothes now. The smart office attire seems to have been abandoned, at least short term. And I said in response to that, it's probably because those clothes don't fit them anymore. Uh, but an expanding national waistline is not an excuse to try and argue that a lack of food is in any way a good thing. Apart from anything else, according to the House of Commons Library, 5 million people in the UK are described as being in food insecure households. That means they can't rely on being able to meet even their calorific needs each day. And that's nothing to do with getting the right nutrients, which is important for a healthy lifestyle, can't even get the bare calories they need. And the real figure is believed to be much higher, especially after the much increased poverty during the pandemic. But millions of people who can't even get their calorific needs met on a regular basis don't need to be told that Brexit food shortages are actually good because the nation needs to go on a diet anyway. Let's be honest, those of us who could do with reducing our calorific content are not going to be encouraged to do so because of these shortages. Like I said, there isn't a shortage of biscuits. It'll just cost more money to need a bigger belt. But what about the people who struggle to afford food? What's the plan for those people? Oh, what's that? There isn't one? Good talk. You know, Save British Farming, which is a lobby group for well, saving British farming, uh, was not impressed with the article. They called it out for what it is, an attempt to justify destroying our food system by blaming obesity. But like I said, the food shortages won't mean there's no food in the country. It will mean there is less fresh food, you know, available for us. And what does exist will be much more expensive. What it is, is a healthcare crisis that affects everyone. But those on budgets more harshly, and those on tight budgets the most harshly of all. Ironically, you could end up increasing obesity with this. You know, I was saying recently, the cruelest aspect of Brexit for me isn't that it's done so much damage to our country, our people and our politics. It's that the Brexiteers persuaded the very people who would suffer most from Brexit 
to vote against their own interests. You know, to deadly consequences in some cases. You know, there are a number of groups who voted to leave the EU, various demographics where most left chose to leave the EU, of course. Um, but a key demographic were those in or close to poverty who just felt it was a low risk choice for high rewards. They were promised these great things with Brexit. And, and it's not necessarily that they believed them. Some did. It's just that they felt that their life was already so bad, but it can't actually get worse, can it? You know, if Brexit, let's say Brexit didn't bring all the promises of these shiny things. After all, we've got we've got these people saying it's going to do these wonderful things. These other people saying it's going to do these terrible things. Well, I mean, we can't be any worse off, can we? We're already pretty badly off. How could we be worse off? It's evil, really. Because now some of those people who voted for Brexit, to make their lives better, will have to live with shortages of food, with a shrinking income, higher costs, energy costs, food costs, transport costs, whether petrol for your own car or public transport, extra taxes on top of it all to pay for those Tories to be given lucrative PPE contracts that many didn't even honour. But these attempts to distract from the causes of food shortages can't be allowed to work. You know, what the article didn't do, of course, was to lay out the problems and explain the solutions. Of course not, because the solutions mean softening Brexit. Because one of the problems is Brexit. So instead, they try and explain that deprivation is actually good for us. Not sure what their readers think about that. Can't imagine too many stalwarts of the Sunday Times will be going without food, though they may struggle to get exactly what they want and have to pay a lot more for their consolation shopping basket. But there are solutions. Never mind global pressures. Other countries have global pressures. They're part of the global supply chain, but they don't have empty shelves. Not seen any European media talking about having no chicken or pork on the shelves next month. Not seen European media talking about how Christmas might be knackered if their government doesn't do something quickly. No, everyone else is just concerned with the pandemic and everything else. If other countries can cope, why can't we? The answer is, of course, of course we can cope. It just requires making different decisions to the ones we're currently making. But those decisions are against what papers like this argued for. So they decide to tell us that we need to go on a diet anyway. Energy crisis? Well, you know, we need to rediscover the joys of sitting around a table having good conversation with the room lit by a candle. Shortage of medicines? Ah, we're overpopulated anyway. I wonder if there's any point at which these people will just say, do you know what? We really genuinely didn't think it would be this bad. You know, should we just turn around now? You know, we, we, we had these ideas about how it might be useful to leave the EU. We really don't think it's worth it now. We didn't think it'd be this bad. Let's just turn around. Because the thing about reversing Brexit, if we have a clear view of what it looks like, when people voted to leave the EU, they didn't know what that looked like. No one had done it before. They were given illustrations, usually involving copious amounts of sunlit uplands and unicorns prancing around. They were pointed back to the 1970s and 60s as if that was a good thing. You know, but, but it was a step into the unknown for many people. Reversing it isn't unknown. It's having energy prices fixed, which is why other co European countries have electricity prices nearly three times lower than ours now. You know, it's having food on the supermarket shelves and the range of food that we had before Brexit. Oh, do you remember when we used to be able to get Danish blue? Oh, yeah. Oh, I hope we don't risk our Danish blue. I like that. It means being able to travel to France with a hamper of food in the back. It means being able to just wander around Europe at your leisure. It means lower prices, less red tape for our businesses. In fact, reversing Brexit means almost all the things that the Brexiteers promised we'd get by leaving the EU. People just didn't realise that they already had it and were actually voting to lose it. But that's what you do. You just show people now, right, you've seen what it's like in the EU. You've now seen what it's like outside the EU. Which one was better? Hmm? And all it would take is for the media to point this out. Wouldn't take much, just consistently reporting the facts. But they won't. So we're going to have to take the long path towards fixing this mess. But yeah, watch out for these narratives. First, the problems of Brexit will be denied. Shortages, what shortages? I see no shortages. Then they'll be blamed on something else. Aye, oh, global issues. Oh, yeah, COVID, nothing to do with Brexit. Then it will be accepted that Brexit is a fact. Oh, yeah, 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 Brexit, something to do with it. There's a very small amount. It's not really worth mentioning. Then they will claim that the benefits outweigh the drawbacks. And when all of that fails, they'll make it looks like they're going to try and claim that our newfound deprivation is actually somehow good for us. 
be good for our soul. We've gotten weak as a country. This will toughen us up. But those are my thoughts. Let me know yours in the comments below. Hope you found the video interesting. If you did, don't forget to click the like button. If you'd like to support the channel further, please also click the Patreon link for details. And until next time, I'll see you later.